All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. we got John Gorman. I have the uh, unique pleasure of introducing him. I actually lived in Springfield when John was the elite premier trainer in the city of Springfield when I used to work out. So, <laughs> anyway, John's an awesome guy. He is an entrepreneur that owns Fat with the P Muscle Project Supplements, and he's the owner of Team Gorman Physical Enhancement, owner of Elite Physical University, owner of the Physique Summit Conference, and the former owner of two Anytime Fitness gyms, one which I used to go to on Republic Road, a four-time published author and proud dad to his two sons, Jay and Gavin, and truly a man that's living out his passion, helping others, John Gorman. All right, can everyone hear me okay, or is that too loud? You guys good in the back? All right. Uh, Adam, great presentation. I'm excited to follow you up. I'm going to use some of what you talked about to make some points in mind. Great presentation. Hope everyone got some caffeine. I know I know it. I know I need it because the food was great. I'm starting to drag a little bit, so there's some good coffee outside. And thank you for the introduction, by the way. Um, I know we all go way back. And quite, I know quite a few of you here that I've met either through the gym business or the supplement business. Um, so I'm really excited to talk. And typically, I'm, I'm speaking at you know, one of our conferences, and it's about weight loss, it's about fat loss, about how to gain muscle, and I work with a lot of professional athletes and, and bodybuilders, or even a mom of three that just wants to look better. Okay, so I speak at a lot of those conferences, and I do talk on business quite a bit to our coaches and trainers and gym owners and things of that nature. So thank you to Sean and Teresa and everyone else that got me here. This is exciting because I don't get to just specifically hone in on something like this all the time. It's usually about weight loss and things of that nature. So um, a little bit more about me. Um, he covered most of it in the introduction. The thing with my talk today, it's about how to use extreme customer service to grow your business. Whether you own a business, whether you work for someone and you're in customer service, whether you're a manager, it doesn't matter. It's how to use extreme over the top customer service to grow your business and your numbers. And it, you notice a lot of the things that I do here, they all involve customer service. And people see the things that we have now, the supplement companies, I had two gyms, I sold those after COVID. Um, you know, we've got conferences and we do a lot of stuff that's all tied to customer service. But the thing is, I've been in that type of business for the last 16 years and you learn a lot from failure. So I want you all to put your customer service hats on Think about what you've seen that's worked well, what you've done that's worked well, but also what have you messed up or what has someone else messed up for you? I want us all to think about being in the customer service industry. Okay, so here's an overview real quick of what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna find out, I wanna read the room, I wanna know a little bit more about you real quick, find out what business that you're in. We're gonna define over the top customer service. You'll see it, it's the OTTCS the rest of the way. Um, we're going to talk about some of the misconceptions that are out there. We're going to understand exactly what it will do. Whether you own the company, whether you work there, you manage people, it doesn't really matter. We're going to find out what exactly these tactics I'm going to show you will do for you personally. We're going to get a little granular on the three key ingredients on how to either build yourself out or your team out to be able to do these things that I'm going to show you and how to apply it to your business or job. We'll get to the fun part. That's always the successful examples of over the top customer service. I've got three or four really good ones that will resonate and that will help you start to think outside the box. Then we'll talk a little bit about in-person interactions, social media, the current landscape that we're in. But we're gonna talk about how this makes such a huge impact and how you can scale your business. And if we have time, we'll have some questions at the end. <clears throat> so, one of the things I like to, to tell people is you have to think big, you have to think long term. So how many people in here have seen the show Halt and Catch Fire, raise your hand. It's not massively popular. Okay, just a couple, right? If you love business, if you love entrepreneurship, if you're very driven to just get better, I highly recommend this, it's four seasons. And one of the people here, he was a visionary on the show, his name is Joe McMillan. And he said, this is the thing that gets us to the thing. And I always heard that, and I thought, what's this guy talking about? So he had a group of people that he was working there, he's a visionary, and they were focusing so hard on building the first computer. And they were so focused on that, they were missing the big 
picture. And he told him, hey, what we're doing now is the thing that gets us to the thing, all right? And it sounds weird, but what I'm about to show you now, it is the thing that will get you to the thing. Because whether it's a promotion at work, whether you own the company, whether you're helping push members you need, whatever it is, this is the thing. So I want you to really start to think about that as we get a little bit more granular here. So let me, let me find out. Any volunteers, I know people don't like to talk, right? But tell me, just somebody tell me some of the businesses that you're in in here, real quick. Anybody, somebody at this table, what business? Say it again. Great business coaching, okay? Who else? Somebody else right here. What, what business are you guys in? Food service. Food service, okay. Adam, digital marketing, correct? Okay, who else? Logistics, okay, we said pizza? Yeah, pizza, that sounds good. Um, who else, back here in the corner? Uh, Mama Jeans, National Market. Mama Jeans, I need to talk to you because we've got natural protein, I need to get in your store and sprinkle. We'll talk after this. <laughs> okay, how many, how many business owners do we have in here? Raise your hand. Okay, excellent, how many managers? Okay. What if I told you everyone that raised your hand was wrong? Sean, you're a big fish in this room, and I just now told you that you're wrong. Pretty, pretty, it's a lot of confidence, isn't it? I'm tricking you though. Here's the thing. We're all in the customer service business. We're not in the pizza business. We're not in the marketing business. We are, that's what we do. But what I need you to do is think about this. From here on the rest of the presentation, you're in the customer service business, okay? So this is my definition of over-the-top customer service. It's the extreme commitment to giving the highest level of service to every person, regardless of the circumstances. And I want you to remember that part. It should go above and beyond what customers expect. So see, I have the five stars pulled up on the phone, okay? In this day and age, Amazon, we leave star reviews. People have Google reviews. We have all this stuff. And also when it comes, and that's important, but when it comes to customer service, whoever you're servicing, in their minds, when they think about you and the interactions that you have, you need to make sure they have that five star imprinted in their brain. And that's what this, this is what's gonna focus on, this whole presentation. It should go above and beyond what your customers expect. The goal is to deliver an amazing customer service experience that makes them not even consider shopping somewhere else. I think we all have those brands and those companies that we use, and there is no way we're gonna use someone else because they do such a good job for us. Their product is so good, their shipping is so good, their interaction when we have a problem is so good that they have our undying loyalty, and that's powerful. And that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna talk about how to build that today. Do anything and everything within your power to make the experience something they will tell their friends about. That's very, very powerful, and you have to be genuine. That's crucial, okay? And this is just, we're kind of skirting over this in the beginning, and then we'll get a little bit more in detail. So let's talk about telling your friends, how, how you want your customers to tell everyone about you. It's the holy grail of advertising, correct? <clears throat> it's the most reliable form of advertising. The future of any business revolves around what customers say outside of your four walls. Well, guess what? This is a giant opportunity that we're all in right now, okay? Sean's here, we've got carpenters here. Everyone that's put this together, guess what? It's a customer service business, okay? They, when I walked in, my old face was on that wall out there with the full beard and everything. I haven't had like five years. They put that out, they didn't surprise me. But you know what? That's above and beyond what I typically get when I speak somewhere speak somewhere else, okay? The food is outstanding. Everything, everyone has been so nice, Teresa and her whole staff. This is a customer service experience, okay? How many people were here for the, the dinner and the awards and things of that nature last night, okay? We're gonna talk about that kind of stuff. But think about this. Your company, this company, or whatever you're in, everything revolves around what customers will say outside of your four walls. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna tell my team how great this conference was because the customer service was above and beyond. That's word of mouth advertising, that's powerful. 
That's extremely powerful. So think about whatever you do with your customers. You want that out of every single one of them. And people, people trust what other people say. Listen, there's a place for ads, digital marketing, and things of that nature. But nothing, nothing will touch word of mouth. Think about the last time you bought something. We pull our phones up. We go to Facebook, for example. And we scroll through and we see a new ad for well, here, here's the thing. If I say it, it's gonna pop up on my phone the rest of the day. So I'm gonna see barbecue grills, okay? So, and I don't need one. But it's, it's gonna happen, because our phones listen to us, but that's a whole other conversation. When I pull up Facebook, I'm gonna scroll through and I'm gonna see a sale on barbecue grills at Lowe's or something, okay? That's digital marketing. And there are people out there that make a lot of money and they create a lot of revenue for people, but what's the difference between that and when, if you need a new barbecue grill, you're just gonna keep scrolling, you're not gonna be that interested in it, but if your friend just bought a brand new barbecue grill and they just had you over and they're raving about it, you're gonna take their word for it over some kind of digital marketing piece, okay? That's what we're trying to create. That's extremely genuine, people feel that. And that's what I went down to talk about. That's, to me, it's the number one thing that you can do right now that most companies aren't doing. People can actually feel that kind of interaction, that word of mouth advertising versus just a regular type of ad. It spreads organically, it's infused with loyalty, and it's extremely valuable. It's extremely scalable, okay? So I just wanna show you a little bit about one of my companies. It's a supplement company. Yes, it's PHAT. How, who knows what PHAT stands for? You won't get in trouble for saying it, it's fine. Anyone? It's not F-A-T, it's P-H-A-T, pretty hot and tempting, okay? It goes back to the 90s if you're old like me, but Fat Muscle Project, so it's a supplement company, and this is on our wall. And if you'll notice the third line down, these are our core values. And it says, on a scale of one to 10, customer service is an 11. And we live that every single day. And that's the way you need to start thinking about the way that you interact with your customers. Because we've been able to grow a company without any digital marketing. It's all been word of mouth for years. And we triple down on this every single day. I said, I wrote on there, we live by this daily with zero exceptions. One other thing that I like to put up to remind us, this is the, the entrance and the exit, whichever depends on the part of the day. So this is a, a picture of one of our events where we had customer service, uh, where we had uh, our top customers and retailers and stuff come in and we gave out a bunch of money and awards, similar to what you guys experienced last night, okay? This is a picture of our folks outside the very first one that we did. And we see that the first thing we walk in every day, and it's the last thing that we see when we walk out. And that lets us know, did we deliver on a scale one to 10 when we had 11 for our customers? And we have to see them every single day. So it's very important for me to put that up because I'm not in the supplement business. I'm in the customer service business. It doesn't matter what we're doing, it's a customer service business first, every day, with zero expectations. Now, here's some misconceptions about doing things over the top, okay? A lot of people think of it as a cost center. They think, what? When somebody has a problem and I have to replace it, should I go above and beyond? You know, if my hotel room was bad, you know, and you own a hotel, should I? I'm gonna miss out on those free nights, especially if I give them an extra free night, or if I give them a food voucher for, for lunch here. They're thinking about what they're losing. They're thinking about glass half empty, not glass half full. And that's a huge misconception when it comes to customer service. If you look at this in the way of taking one step back to give back someone or to fix a problem, you're going to take two steps forward or four steps forward or 10 steps forward. You can't think of this as a cost center, it's a revenue generator. It's very organic. So that's a misconception that I wanna make sure people don't take with them. Now let's drill down on these. Let's, let's get really specific on this because then I'm gonna show you how to build out your team or yourself. Understanding exactly what over the top customer service will do. And these are things I guarantee you if done right, these will happen. You'll grow your business, Loyalty increases. Think about this. Think about the last time a customer, either you serviced a customer or someone else serviced you as the customer. And 
and they did something so incredibly above and beyond for you. You are now loyal. Like we said earlier, you're not going to shop somewhere else. The retention, right? Retention for that business is going to increase. And one of the, the best things I learned from my mentor, Monty Pierce, whenever I used to run gyms before I opened them, we would have people join. Listen, we've all joined a gym and quit the gym. We're like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. It's too much. Okay? Retention is something he taught me about. He said, it's easier to keep a gym member, it's easier to keep a customer than it is to try and do the things to replace them. Okay? So when you go above and beyond and you create a loyal customer, the retention increases. Guess what? Your reorders increase. Sometimes we have an 80% reorder rate on some months, which is insane. That means 80% of our orders that come in are reorders. That's, that's a really high retention rate. That's a lot of loyal customers because we do the things to go above and beyond that I'm going to point out here for you. Um, it also makes forecasting and analyzing your numbers much easier. I'm a bean counter at heart. I love looking at my numbers. I look at them daily. I just I geek out about it. But when you start to forecast, when you start to have your team meetings and your staff meetings and you're looking at numbers, when you have a loyal base, when you have a high reorder rate, a high retention rate, guess what? You can start forecasting. You can start looking at, at quarters, monthly, quarterly, uh, biannually. You can start looking at those and they're much more stable. Okay? And that's what having loyal customers that come back will do for you. So then it lets you start to plan things out at a greater rate. It helps weather storms. Obviously, we all remember COVID. I don't even like to talk about it anymore because we, it's, it's an example in almost every presentation. But when you have loyal customers, it helps you weather when bad things happen. It helps you weather the storm. And I'm a competitive person. One of our main competitors is here in St. Louis. And I think about this all the time when we do business. How can our customer service be better than them? It will make you stand out from them because most people are not going to do what I'm going to show you here in the next few slides. And then finally, uh, Adam's not in here, but I wanted to point out something that he said in his presentation. It makes work so much more enjoyable, but he was talking about when you focus just on the money, when you just focus on the growth or whatever it is, right? When you focus on making people happy, your numbers are going to, you're going to make more money. You're going to get promoted. You're going to stand out. It makes work so much more enjoyable. So if you're in this room and you're a manager or a CEO or the owner of a company or you, you're in charge of customer service, this is the kind of workplace you want. When you service people and you make them so happy, your workplace is a much better place, which guess what? Then your retention goes up. So this is something that spreads like wildfire inside of your organization as well. All right. So this is really, really key. I'm gonna show you how to build out either yourself, if you're a team of one. How many people in here, I know, I know we're all in customer service, but how many people actually are in customer service where you deal with conflict, returns, and things like that? Okay, quite a bit. This will probably resonate with a lot of you, okay? But for those of you who don't, this is still gonna help you see what it's like to live the customer service lifestyle inside of your job. So the first thing you have to do is create policies that put customers first daily, not the company first, that put customers first daily. And sometimes something will happen where we've all had the time where we had to return a product or we got something and it wasn't what we thought it was supposed to be or it shouldn't. So maybe you buy a pair of pants somewhere and they're starting to come undone at the bottom and you've only worn once. And you email a company and you say, hey, you know, these are bad and they don't have a policy to put it to, to, to give you a return. If you don't have good policies in place, then all you can do is apologize. And then another company like us, we're going to be out there with great policies. We're not only going to replace the pants, we're going to find out what shirt size you are too, and we're going to send that to you. We're going to give you a $25 gift card to the store. We're going to go above and beyond. Because think about it this way. When you deal with cut, and those of you in direct customer service understand, a lot of the times it's not just the things we're doing daily to make people happy, it's how we fix the problems. So a lot of times when people have a return, you need to think about what can I do that's going to make them happy immediately because people are upset. So this is something that you have to make sure you've got policies in place to take care of things right away. Bad company policies get in the way of over the top customer service satisfaction. This is really key. If you notice I have a cake mix, okay? And there's all, well, there's a lot of, I don't bake, but there's a lot of ingredients that go into this to make it the right thing that we want. We've got sugar, we've got salt, we've got flour, butter, milk, eggs, etc. 
When you build out your team, you need to have these key ingredients that I have listed up here. And think about this if this is you, okay, especially in customer service. You need to be empathetic or have someone who's empathetic. You need to have a high EQ. And you also need to have a knack for problem solving. And if you have those three ingredients, you're going to have a cake that tastes amazing. Now, if you have two of the three, you're going to have a cake that doesn't have milk in it. Maybe the cake's a little dry. It still looks like a cake, but it's not going to be exactly what we want. We want to make the perfect cake, and you want to have the perfect customer service team. So being empathetic, if you're, if you're old and grouchy like me, and you get people that message you and they say, hey, I'm not real happy about this, and they're kind of nagging at you, you need to have somebody that can put themselves in the shoes of that customer and be able to be empathetic and understand they have a legitimate gripe. Okay, I can do that now, but John, 10 years ago, was kind of a cranky old man. So you need to make sure that you have people that are very empathetic. And high EQ, my definition of high EQ, you know, we've got intelligence, uh, IQ, we've got people that are very smart. But high EQs is when people can actually read other people, they have uh, high common sense value. Like that's the kind of people that you want when it comes to dealing with feelings and emotions. Okay, this isn't a numbers game. Remember, we're dealing with people's feelings and emotions when they need something fixed or when you're trying to provide them a good service. So it's not just about numbers. And then an act for problem solving. There are going to be things that pop up when it comes to customer service that you are not planned for, that you've never seen before. I remember when we first started, we had a batch of, of product that went bad on us. It just had been mixed wrong and it went bad. And we had to replace a whole bunch of, we didn't have any policies in place for that, we were brand new but we're problem solvers. So when it comes to customer service, you need to have somebody who's got a really good knack for problem solving. And that's the third ingredient. And finally, if you're in charge of people, you need to give them the do's and the don'ts, but you need to let them have the creativity, the freedom to be generous and take care of people. And you don't wanna micromanage because here's what happens. When you micromanage customer service, it drags it out. And when you have Sally, it's calling your phone and she's really upset that she ordered that pair of pants. She's mad now. And if you have someone that's micromanaging, it's gonna, it's gonna delay it. You need to make Sally happy right away. That's the goal immediately, okay? Or whatever the situation is. So don't micromanage, it slows the process. So a team without flexibility and freedom, they can't wow a customer. So now you've got the understanding of what over the top customer service will do. And now you've got the three key ingredients on how to build your team out or how to do this yourself. All right, everyone loves Oprah, okay? She's awesome. So what we're gonna do now, this is the fun part, because I want you to start thinking about the business that you're in and how your customer service ties to this, all right? Now remember, we don't want this to be a cost center, it's profit generator, so we're not gonna give everyone a free car, but we are, we do want our customers, like Oprah over here on the left, they, we want them this happy when they deal with us. We want them to, to spread word of mouth. This is the kind of excitement that you want for your business and company. Okay, let's talk about giveaways. This is something that we started doing every single month. And it's our spar supplement, supplement company. And every month we put this out on social the first time and I just want to see, one, I want to give back because I was happy everybody was buying our supplement. You know, we're excited, so we just want to get back. And we put out there any order, and we would do it for two days. So pretend it's today and tomorrow. Any order that people place in here, we will download our orders and we'll put your name in a drawing. We put it in this big spin wheel online and post videos of it and everything. But we give away a $500 gift card. And a lot of people remember, a lot of people are thinking, well, I don't want to give up $500. I don't, I don't want to do that every single Think about it. What's $500 times 12? That's six grand a year. I don't want to give that up. But that's not the point. We want to take care of people that are loyal buying our supplements. And now we want to give them somebody a $500 gift card. Well, guess what happened? We made eight to $10,000 in two days extra from what we had been making. And that's, maybe that's not a lot of money to some people here. It doesn't matter. The point is, it just shot up. Okay, and then we start doing it every single month. And one of our main competitors, they might give away something on Black Friday, and it might be a $250 gift card, and they make like $400 million a year. Gigantic company. Imagine if they did something like this. 
Do you know what their sales numbers would do? Imagine if you did something like this for your current customers. Think about what you can give back to make someone happy. And by the way, everyone loves this when we post it because they've all got a chance. They're all placing orders anyway. They just, they make sure they place their orders right then. So that our, our orders do go up, they spend more. If you spend $300, you get your hat in the name 10 times. Guess what, everybody's gonna spend 300 bucks. So sales shot through the roof. But then we give back and someone's happy every single month. So think about if you did something like this, what would that do for your business if you gave back? It's not gonna cost you 500 bucks. It could make you eight to 10 extra that month, okay? Give back. And it should always be organic without any hooks or catches. I, this cannot be a sales tactic. It is a sales tactic, but it has to be a genuine one. People can smell when something's genuine or not, okay? It's kind of like when some people go out and donate so they can post and talk about it. Like, it's not, this is not one of those times. You want to give back to your customers that are putting money in your pocket, okay? Maybe my favorite example of all times friend of mine that I had just met owns a funeral home, Mid Beach Funeral Homes in Hamilton, Missouri, about an hour and a half from here. And how much more personal can you get than this? So he's in the funeral business, and one of the guys that passed away was a mechanic, and he was a huge, hit, hit this toolbox was his thing, okay? Had a, a orange snap-on toolbox. And what Ryan did, unbeknownst to his family, he went out and he took this casket you know, the, the gray one here on the left. And he took it to a body shop and he had it painted, snap on orange. You probably can't see it here, but there are, you know, some logos on them, snap on logos. There's pictures of his family inside. One says dogs, because he was a big dog guy. And he went out and did this for the family. Well, what do you think that cost him? I used to be in the auto body business. So it was probably at least a grand that he spent without asking them. So they showed up and this is what the family saw without even knowing that it was gonna happen. Above and beyond, over the top customer service. So guess what? The next time someone passes away, who do you think they're gonna, they're gonna, first of all, they're gonna tell everybody about this, okay? But when someone else passes away, they're gonna spread the word for him, okay? Now he did it because he likes to make people happy in probably the worst times of our lives. It's the perfect time to do it. He did it genuinely. And he does that stuff all the time. And he stands out. How many funeral homes do you know they're gonna do that? We all show up to the funeral home and it's very, everybody wear black, everybody's sad. People are happy. Can you imagine that? How scalable is something like that? He stays busy all the time. Probably my favorite example of anyone that I can think of. Uh, talk about a couple of other things. So like I said, you all were just in a customer appreciation event last night. But think about what you can do. And maybe it's just a small event for some of your team members or whatever, but giving back and recognizing your top customers, we bring in our top, we've got sponsored coaches, we've got retail locations, gyms, and supplement stores that sell our stuff, uh, some grocery stores. We bring in our top customers that spend the most money. So our top 10 customers every year, we bring them in, we pay for the hotel, we have a huge conference series, we feed them, we give out awards and cash, we give out close to like eight grand last year. And it's something to where you give back and it keeps them loyal, but it's generally, it's our way of saying thank you. So how can you do that for someone else? How can you do that for your top people? Because think about it, your top customers are your most loyal. So you need to triple down on them. That's gonna make your numbers go up. And it's worth it. it it's, a, it's a big expense right out of the gate when we did it, but you write it off and your numbers go up and you grow and you create a loyal army that's going to spread word of mouth for you. Make it a contest every year. People are competitive. There's a lot of people whenever we post, hey, these are our top 10 customers. And they think, well, how, what do I have to do to get into that? I want to be a part of that. People are competitive. They're drawn to stuff like that. Okay. It doesn't have to be something that's huge. It doesn't have to be. So this is one of our awesome customers. His name is Josh Phillips. And I told Josh he's in my presentation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show him a little clip of this. So Josh, this is, this is for you. We were in the office shipping stuff and I had just happened to see on social media, it was his birthday. And he ordered, uh, I think it was, yeah, you can see him here, it's a couple shirts. So what, I went and got his packing slip. I wrote, hey Josh, happy birthday, I appreciate you. I put a Fat Muscle Project notebook in there, some stickers, and just the simple thank you. 
That's the kind of stuff that you should do no matter what when the opportunity presents itself. But this goes even further than that because here's what happens when you have loyal people that you take care of. That's back to social media, which we're gonna talk about a little bit here. Josh went on social media and he posted, hey, look what these people, they did for me. They sent me a thank you. They sent me some freebie stuff. And he was blown away by it. So now it goes from me connecting to one person, happy birthday, to that person posting to connecting to who knows how many, okay? Those people may not even know who Fat Muscle Project is, but they do now and they know that we, we care. But it has to be genuine. You can't do stuff like that. If you hire a staff of 100 people to write thank you cards, generic thank you cards, I get it, like that's part of businesses, but nothing will ever trump something like that. So think about the small ways that you can connect with people like that, that will make their customer service experience over the top. Here's the take home, and this is what I want you to really think about. Make over the top customer service your new standard every single day, whether it's your job, whether you own the company, whether you're looking for a promotion, you have to make this, this make this your new standard because other places aren't doing it. Your coworkers aren't doing it. They might do it better than them. You're gonna stand out. If the CEO of the company is in here and I'm trying to do it, I'm gonna stand out because I'm gonna make my customers so happy. He's gonna come to me and be like, John, what are you doing? You're now in charge of our customer service department. Okay, so whatever it is you need to do, it doesn't matter the job. This is gonna make your company succeed. It's gonna make the numbers better. You're going to stand out. Everyone should be doing this. Wow customers and they'll tell everyone for you, the holy grail, word of mouth. Let you stand apart from your competition, whether it's inside your four walls and it's your coworkers or it's your competition in your certain space that we talked about earlier. Triple down on the things that work and be genuine. So there will be things that work. The $500 gift card for us, it works. I love giving back. We do it every single month. Triple down on that. Customer appreciation events, we triple down on that. Thank yous, if it's someone's birthday or congratulations. This is my son Jay over here in the corner. He helped start the company in uh, 2016. We traveled the world or the, the United States and selling um, shirts at the time. Well, it was his idea to have baby onesies because he doesn't want a little baby that says fat muscle on it. There's this little baby thing, right? This is my genius 16 year old at the time. He would, we would be at a big event and we'd see someone walking around with a baby. He wanted to go give it to them for free. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, he was thinking that way because he just wanted to be good to people. So we just had one of my uh, best friends just had a baby, Matt Holcomb, and we just mailed out two baby onesies in a bit. Talking about how his little fat baby, right? P-H-A-T. Things like that. It's little things like that. Triple down on touching people and it's going to come back. Repeat, repeat, repeat. It's literally that simple, but guess what? Most people aren't doing it. They're not approaching their work like that every single day. Uh, there are time for questions. Does anyone have any questions? I will be around after two if you want to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. No? All right, thank you very much. You guys have a great day.